Hello. Yes, genetic risk factors are an issue, but what most people don't know is that 99% of Alzheimer's cases have no genetic cause. So this helps us look at our behavior and what we can do to lower our risk. Here we review four behaviors that you can change to reduce your risk of dementia with the specific percentage of how much your risk goes down with each one. At the end, we'll cover the one that makes the biggest difference. Yes, genetic risk is a real issue. We know that the APOE4 gene variant can increase the risk for late onset Alzheimer's disease. In fact, I personally have one copy of this variant, which isn't that uncommon in the US population. More than 25% of people in the United States are estimated to have at least one copy of this genetic variant. In the general population, 11 to 14% of people are expected to develop Alzheimer's disease by the age of 85. With one copy of the E4 variant, up to 20 to 30% of the population is expected to develop Alzheimer's by the age of 85. That's another reason why I'm in this field. But what most people don't know is that there is no direct genetic cause for 99% of cases of Alzheimer's disease. So let's get to the data to tell us what we can do. In 2017, the Lancet Commission on Dementia published a paper highlighting a growing body of evidence that supported nine potentially modifiable risk factors for dementia. In 2020, they completed more studies and meta-analyses to come up with three additional risk factors for dementia based on a newer and even more convincing evidence. They then incorporated these into a 12 risk factor life course model for dementia prevention. We'll go through four top factors now, counting down to the highest impact factor at the end. Factor number four, social isolation. The researchers assessed how much each factor contributed to the risk of dementia. Social isolation accounts for up to 3.5% of dementia cases. Evidence on social interaction and the value of it has been very consistent, and we have some really good data on this. It is now considered to be well established that increased social interaction in midlife decreases dementia in late life. I have a video on what you can do to increase certain types of social support and social interaction that is especially good for brain health. The link is above me on the video right now if you wanna check that out or I'll put it down in the description below. So moving on to factor three, the number three factor related to risk for dementia is depression. Depressed mood is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. The researchers found that depression accounts for an estimated 3.9% of dementia cases. We specifically need to highlight that depression is not normal aging and it isn't a way that people have to live. There is significant support for several different types of treatments for depression, including things like medication, psychotherapy or counseling, and other lifestyle interventions. If you're having a hard time finding a counselor, I have a video on different strategies that you can use to get better results. This leads us to factor number two, smoking. In 2020, an estimated 12.5% of Americans, which equates to 30.8 million people, still smoked. The researchers found that smoking accounted for 5.2% of dementia cases. So if you were outside sharing a cigarette with 20 other smokers, you should look around because one of you is going to develop dementia just based on that habit. Of all the habits to quit, smoking is a hard one. But the key is we don't have to do it alone. Structured help with smoking cessation improves the chances of success. I'll add several links to programs that can be very helpful in smoking cessation in the description below. And now, drum roll for the number one way that we can change what's happening for us and reduce our risk of dementia. It's hearing loss. Hearing loss had the greatest effect, accounting for an estimated 8.2% of dementia cases. This means that we want to reduce hearing loss by protecting our ears throughout our lives from loud noises. 
But if we do happen to suffer from hearing loss, we need to get it treated. Hearing aid technology is advancing rapidly and hearing aid devices are getting smaller, more effective and easier to use. More and more programs are directed toward the idea that people need to be able to afford hearing aids. So if you or a loved one are suffering from hearing loss, I have an entire video on sensory functioning and how it's related to brain health and what you can do. So there you have it. Four things you can work on today to reduce your risk of dementia. And if you already have those four down, feel free to come back next week where we'll talk about the other factors on that list and what else you can do to reduce your risk of dementia. Thanks for coming.